up for Jesus. You may be seated. Matthew 18, verse 21. Remember our message. No one can live above his weakness. As long as Jesus is not part of your life. Verse 21. I just want to call you on this path of forgiveness. There was a man who was owing the king a lot of money. Then this man was like, uh, I mean, the king ordered the man and his family members to be arrested and sell them so that they could, they could pay the debts. But the man pleaded to say, please, my Lord, give me time so that I can, you know, pay this in Congole. And the king understood that request. Then later, the man just left the, the king. There he saw a man who was just owing him a hundred. He grabbed the man's neck to say, you pay me the money. The man, I mean, the man who had just been forgiven by the master, and this man was owing the king a lot of money, in short, millions. And here is the brother who just owing him a hundred. He grabbed the neck. He said, you pay me, or else. He carried the man in the prison. How I wish, let me try to see if I can run you through this. Let's go to verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sin against me? Up to seven times. That is Peter now. 22. Jesus answered, I tell you, not even seven times, but 77 times. 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. 24. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Remember, gold is very expensive. 10,000 what? Bags of gold. This man was brought before the king. 25. Since he was not able to pay the master, order that he and his wife and his children and all that had to be sought to repair the debts. 26. At this, the servant fell on the knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything. 27. The servant's master took pit on him, canceled the debts, and let him go. We start from there first. This is the man who was owing the king 10,000 bags of gold. And the order was given that this man and his household must be sold so that they can repair the debts. But the man go, go on his knees and pleaded with the king to say, my Lord, be patient with me. I will pay you the money. The king forgive the man and let the man go. That's where we are now. This man was owing the king 10,000 bags of God was forgiven. And the king let him go. What happened to this man after he left the palace? 28. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. Hundred what? He was owing the king what? Which one is more expensive, silver or gold? Hundred silver coins. He was owing the king 10,000 bags of gold. 
the fellow servant, his fellow servant was owing him 100 silver coins. Listen to what this man did to this uh, fellow servant. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me. He demanded. This is the man who has just left the palace. Owing the king 10,000 bags of God. His fellow servant was owing him 100 silver what? The Bible says that he grabbed the man and began to choke him. Pay back my money. Pay back my what? Honestly speaking, even if you are a wicked man, even if you are a wicked person, you have been forgiven 10,000. Your friend is 100 coins. 100 coins. Not 1,000. You, you have been forgiven 10,000 bags. Even, even the number which is here, we are not even equal to 1,000. Now, think about 10 what? 100 silver coin can just be put inside this one. It cannot be full, this one. Now, 10,000 bags of God, he was given. But him, he could not forgive his fellow servants. Remember our message. No one can live above his weakness. No one can do what? And there's no way you can learn how to be a good person outside your life. I mean, outside your heart. The good character lies in your heart. When the king forgave this man, it was not, you know, consulting anyone. It was because of his good heart. So he forgave the man to say, you can go, don't even pay. But the man, you know, grabbed his fellow worker who was just owing him a hundred coins of silver, not even God. Listen to this. 29. His fellow servants fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and hand the man, I mean, had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debts. You, you pleaded with he, your king, and the king forgive you. Do you know that the people that you condemn are better than you? You know that? The people that you condemn, because no one knows your weakness, they are better than you. Even those who are condemning you because of one or two things, you are better than them. This man, where he was coming from, he was also condemned by not paying the debts. No one knows that this man was owing the king 10,000 bags of gods, except his fellow what? Servants. It's a parable, people of God. He was busy condemning his fellow servants because of 100 silver coins to the extent where he even took him to the prison. Not until you pay me back. What a life. You have been forgiven. 10 million. And your colleague is just owing you 50,000. I mean, let me just put it in this way. You are owing the king 10 million. And then your friend is owing you 10,000. And you have been forgiven for that 10,000. You, I mean, for that 10 million. You, you cannot forgive someone who is owing you a 10,000 kwacha compared to 10 million. No one, people of God, can live above his weakness. The weakness of this man was unforgiveness. He was not ready to forgive. Which leads now him to sin. Because it was, he was able to forgive. 
a situation could not be like the way it was. After the king discovered that the person that you forgive, this is what he has done to his fellow servants. The king ordered the man to be arrested. Let me read the last one uh, so that you, 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 you understand my point. I want to pick verse 35, but I want you to, to read all of it because of time. If you, 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 you continue with 32, 33, 34, 35, but let me read 35. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Unless you do what? You forgive your brother, your sister from where? No matter what people of God, there is no way you can learn how to forgive or to value forgiveness in your life if Jesus is not part of your life. What this man was lacking, it is the life of the king in his life. If the man was able to learn from the master who forgave him, he was supposed to carry that heart to say, ah, this is my master. Let me follow the footsteps of my master. Anyone who is owing me, I'm going to treat them the way my master has treated me. And who is the master in this case? That is Jesus. So you cannot live a perfect life because you don't drink beer. No. You cannot live a perfect life because you are running a company. No. You cannot live a perfect life because you are a minister. You are what? You are a very rich person. That thing that you have, Satan will use them to abuse your life so that you miss heaven. What do I mean? Meaning, even if you are running a company, let Jesus be part of that company. Even in our marriage, for you to understand each other, let Jesus be part of Because it will be very difficult for you to forgive your wife or your husband without Jesus in your heart. Because forgiveness comes from the heart and a pure and sincere heart. This man could not forgive someone who was owing him 10, I mean, 100 coins of silver. He was owing the king 10,000 bags of gold. His character, even if you know he was owing the king, he could not compare his debts to the debts of his friends. He sees his friend to be a bad person. And yet, he was a bad person. Jesus paid the debt for him. He was busy persecuting his friend. He took his friend to prison. And then the king ordered the man to say, bring him back. He said, you are a wicked person. What are you learning, people of God? Stop condemning your fellow human beings. If you are condemning your fellow human being, you too, there are people who are condemning you, whom you don't know. If you want God to forgive your sins and see you as a good person in his eyes, you need to be good to your fellow human beings. If you want to live a, a good life, perfect life, even your fellow human beings, they want to live the same way. Even those people are taking us to prison. If you put them on the defense to say you are going to prison, they will start crying. Because they know what it means to go to prison. But it is very easy to condemn your friend. You, you are a perfect woman. You are a perfect man. The people that you condemn are better than you. This man was condemning his fellow servants, and yet his fellow servants was better than him. Because ena ba muele la pama thousands, ena fru o kuele la pama coins are hundred. Who is better? Iwe ba kuele. I think we na send a direct example je vele muni nani? Infu munga kuti andeke la ten million. What is what is ten thousand? Ule enda fio mutende. But waika tomu no pamkoshi. Ule mpela. 
Naba no beta bala la be fiem fumu ya kwele yo lo lempela. Until you take that person to the prison. The people that you thought are bad people, they are much better than you. It's just that they don't know who you are. But God who knows you and your activities is looking at you and said, this is the way you are treating your sister, your brother, your children. Look at this wagon that you are calling. I'm talking about the weakness. Self-righteousness will mislead your future. If you think that you are the only person who is perfect, more than anyone here on earth, you are making a mistake. If your friend cannot discover who you are, then your children and your wife, they know your, your character. They are complaining that if you are a tababa, a bantunga badi beshiba, nga tababa paramina na mpepi. Nga teba na family yoba ila ilisha nya pafio waba. You too, you are busy condemning. People are better than you. No one can live above his weakness or a weakness. This is why we need Jesus, people of God. You need to ask God to remember you. Stop condemning your fellow human beings. Stop judging your fellow human beings. The same forgiveness that you need is the same forgiveness that I need. I'm standing here, it's just a privilege. It doesn't mean that I'm more perfect than you. No. It's just a privilege which God gave me. We are all equal before God Almighty. But no one can live above his weakness or our weakness. Umuntwe pa kwi kala fera fiya kwa tukuti asumina fili ba brother ba temwa ba maya ba temwa umu anapa mu temwa afiri kwa ta Yesu Kristu mukati kama timwa kwa Yesu Kristu kwa ta kale mata kwa ta weakness. He has no weakness. So when you are given an office, without Jesus, your collector will abuse that office. If you have got spirit of lust, all the workers who are working under that office, you'll be sleeping with them. Whoever is going to refuse, hey, they will face what? Tough time. As long as they cannot sleep with you in that office you occupy, you start condemning them. You start charging them. Unnecessary. Because if your weakness is spirit of lust and you are working with women all over that department, Tell me why you cannot propose them. Tell me why you cannot propose them. What can make you to live a perfect life in that office is the life of Jesus in you. Without Jesus, you abuse that office. You abuse everyone around you. So no one can live above his weakness. If it is anger, Hmm. You know what you can do with that anger. Jesus came to perfect our life. Look at this man. He was forgiven 10,000 bags of gold. The friend was just owing him 100 coins of silver. The man could not forgive. That is the weakness he had. Because no one knows that him too was owing the king. He wants to show the people that he's a, a very powerful man. He's a very straight man. He doesn't owe anyone. And yet, hmm? Are you going to be happy? Uh, but why do you want others to be called Ifinangwa? God knows our activities. No one knows your activities apart from God Almighty. So when you are busy condemning your sister, your brother within the family, within the company, know for sure that God also might, I mean also is watching what you are doing. He knows your activities. No one knows, but he knows your activities. He said, okay, since you are condemning my people, I'm going to condemn you. Just wait for my time. 
Just wait for my time. I'm going to condemn you. You are busy condemning all your colleagues, all your friends, your brother, your sister within the family. They are families, people of God. No one is perfect. Only God Almighty. So stop condemning your friend. Stop condemning your husband. Stop condemning your wife. But the deliverance, not If you are busy condemning them at the church, they will not come to church. They will not come for deliverance. But if you embrace them, because you too you have got your own weakness, then they'll come and be like you. Nibanga ave ngate mokula nda weakness wako ata nefyo bachita na yo. Tapari. But inga muamono munenu nishiponzi, ye, kwe nelo chalo chupuile, what about what you do private? Ichalo ta chapwa, pantu uriaba exposed. No one can live above his weakness or a weakness. The good example is this man who could not forgive his friend. Just 100 coins compared to 10,000 bags of God, you cannot forgive. The sweeper second is moving. One day, God will catch up with you. Allow Jesus to be part of your life. Allow Jesus to control your life. If you carry Jesus inside your heart, you condemn no one. You pray for everyone. Thank you. God bless you.